Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we are about to undertake the mission that everything has been leading up to. What you see me doing here is selecting a keythane patch on Minmus for our Minmus based refuel depot. I should have used Minmus so many times there, but there we go. Um, so yeah, I'm just looking around for a nice equatorial patch of keythane so we can start landing down like drill rigs and fuel tanks, um, maybe some sort of science cleaning place so that we can have a little buggy that goes around and collects all the science from Minmus. Uh, yeah, that, that's basically what I want to what I want to start setting up today. Um, today we're going to be launching the actual, well, not the actual, a test drill platform. Um, just to, just to see if the small small bits work because so far in our science tree we're 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 missing um, a few pieces. Um, anyway, heading back to the space center, it's time for us to go spend our previous Minmus science. Jeb obviously went off uh, to Minmus, dragged his ass all the way up there. Uh, launched back, brought back oodles of science, oodles and oodles of science, so it was something like 400 there. So I started my spending spree by purchasing the drill platform, I'm not sure what else was in that little pack there but the uh, the drill platform was definitely what I was after. Um, I then bought the, the next uh, item on the, the, the tier lower down, that, that was the large um, uh, large fuel tanks and the radial, um, the large radial engines. Uh, and now I'm just having a look around at what else I want to buy. And I'm fairly sure that I want the fuel pumps and the the, the skipper engine. Um, and indeed, I think I'm just going to go straight for that. I've been looking at docking ports. I've been looking at the uh, the at the asteroid clamp because that that would just be pretty cool. I'm not sure what I'd use it for. I'd probably just like strap jets and well, not jets, rockets and and habitation modules and all sorts of stuff to to one of these asteroids and turn it into my own mobile space base. I wonder if you can get Keythane on asteroids. Probably not. Keythane, um, asteroids aren't planets after all. Anyway, what are we building here? Well, connoisseurs of you out there will not recognize the Keythane conversion unit and the smallest Keythane tank. Uh, now that I thought about it, I'm not sure why I did the smallest other than this was kind of the first mission up there. Um, so there we go. Uh, we've also noticed that there's some eyes at the top there. So I'm just going to give this guy a jaunty little mouth here and possibly a few um, uh, pupils and stuff. Um, yeah, like that, with, with, with these. That, that looks good. Oh, beautiful styling. This guy's got some, uh, got some class, you know? Anyway, so that's the basic units that we need. We also need to put somewhere where we're going to put the liquid fuel that we have actually um, converted. So we'll, we'll pop that on top and it will also be uh, immensely helpful for landing this on Minmus because obviously we need to get it there in the first place. And a small jump cut takes us forward to this. I've added landing gear, um, solar panel fancy headdress, somewhere to sit a Kerbal and some um, monoprop fuel tanks. Uh, the fuel tank, the monoprop's there more to give me a repository for monoprop because I know I'm going to be using a lot of that up there. And of course our spangly new radial engines for um, landing. Obviously, we, we need to get this thing down to a keythane patch so we can start mining some serious keythanes. And radial engines are how we're going to do it so we can get the, the drills nice and low. All that really is left to do now is to throw monoprop on, as I have just finished doing, some fancy lighting and maybe a keythane detector. Pow! No keythane detector, but there's everything else that I said I was going to put on there. Um, this is, of, of course, as I've not mentioned it beforehand, uh, my mobile keythane drilling rig. Um, you can see the drills on the outside, and I explained everything else while, on it, while I was on about it then. So, the next thing is to make some sort of interplanetary uh, module. Um, I give thought to just slapping a launcher on underneath it, but I, I, I really do need a little... Um, thrusting up to Minmus uh, thing to add on the bottom. And 10 minutes later I've come up with this beauty. That is indeed a skipper in the middle with the two meter uh, fuel tanks above that. We then have the large one meter diameter, I think it's one meter, uh, fuel tanks outside of that and then some great big solid boosters out of that. All firing at once, dropping them from the outside. You can see the yellow there of the fuel line, meaning that the asparagus um, staging has been implemented and this of course is Keith's froggy waiter. Yes, 
You heard me correct. Keith's froggy waiter. As you can tell by that somewhat alarming pitch on my boosters there, uh, my rocket design has taken into account the fact that when the boosters boost, uh, everything's gonna, it's gonna push everything together. Definitely not a mistake where I didn't put any struts on. This is, this is design intention. Now due to the slightly shake, I have a quick check to see if I've broken anything and and then this builds up and it all, I'm just like, oh no, oh no, oh, 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 which I think is quite nice. And I also have the uh, foresight to get out and have a good look at all the bits spraying off in every direction. Uh, Jeb, of course, is technically doomed at this point, but I'm not playing permadeath, so I'm probably just going to roll it back. Let's see if we can land it, though. Oh no, we've only got one engine. Well, sorry, Jeb. Uh, this future clone simulation of you uh, didn't make it. That is quite a view, though. And, um, unfortunately, I didn't quite check to see how ooh, how many Gs we were pulling. <laughs> uh, that was a uh, return to sender there. Uh, send him straight back to the astronaut complex. Or maybe that was the science building. Anyway, maybe there's a few... Uh, a few fixings that need to happen here. Uh, we're just going to do that and skip to the launch pad. So we've added struts top and bottom of all the external tanks and boom off we go. Beautiful green light indicating the purpose of our mission of course to go get them sweet sweet key things. Um, launch is nominal. Uh, uh, there's not really much to, to talk about on this one so I'm actually going to jump us up to Apoapsis. And here we are at the dizzying heights of 60 kilometers. Not quite as high as I would like, but it'll do. I, I've got my nose in the air. It turns out these skippers, not quite as good as you'd hope for, but that's all right. This is still just my, my, my launch stage. I, I've not even got into the bit that I wanted to take us to, um, to Minmus. So yeah, it's all good. What more do you need? So with my Perry apps up, like in the plus numbers, I decided it's time to start figuring out where Mimus is so we can um, boost our way on out there. It, I always like to do it in like within the first orbit, just I don't know, I get impatient or something. Um, which means that I've got to figure out where all my maneuver nodes are going to Minmus. Obviously my maneuver nodes are going to Minmus. And just to prove it, here's me doing my orbital climb burn. Yes, here's the correction burn, and here is the rock itself. Woo! So we're just about to watch uh, an alarm tick over, and that is to tell me that we are at Periapsis of Minmus. So we need to uh, point ourselves in the right direction, retrograde of course, and bring our orbit down into a nice circular thing like this. Now what I actually want to do is bring my periaps down so that contact is made with the planet does take me a second to figure out that that is what I want to do, but there we go. Boom, straight like that. So we can then turn around and do a bit of staging. Well, no turning was done there. Uh, but we've done a bit of staging, which is, you know, good. We, with less mass to try and get down to the planet safely. Now we just need to uh, thrust our way back up into a, a, an orbit that's not just going to smash into the floor and start thinking about where we're going to land this. Of course, we have already selected our landing point and we just need to try and get down to that particular point right there. So we're going to bring ourselves down and find a point on a roughly the equatorial line uh, right there to um, bring us into, a, into a, a less inclined orbit. And I'm going to skip me messing, messing around with all these uh, maneuver nodes because it takes me forever. Now I can't remember which point of the journey I noticed this, but one of my uh, RCS nozzles is in totally the wrong place. Uh, Jeb should now be indicating where, where it is. It's You see just like in between the engine and the main body, there, that thing. So if I grab that and just fly on round, this is like the best bit about the Kerbal attachment system. I mean, it makes flying very, very awkward, but once, if you mess anything up at all, well, not anything at all, but if you mess any of the radial equipment up, you can just get out and, and redistribute stuff. Particularly good for monoprop and RCS. So if you just pick up or put down any particular like large bit of mass, you can redistribute how, how the, uh, the, the the controls throw fire. That's amazing. Anyway, we're going to plummet down to like ridiculous level. Um, there is like an hour to wait, but hopefully I should be speeding this along quite nicely. Yeah. 
uh, like that. There we go. I knew if I just stretched that word out long enough, we can get there without a jump cut. Uh, and here we go. We're just going to thrust away, and hopefully the uh, indicator there will put us bang on the uh, the equatorial line uh if there's one set of uh, burns that i don't know how to do intuitively it's these um uh, inclination adjustments I, j I just can't get my head around it i don't know why but anyway that there is the patch we're going for that was nice of me to point it out on the mouse there um and well th this should be fairly easy we just get up and over the the, the bit we're going for and kill all our forward velocity so we'll take a small jump forward to that bit. Um, we're literally just down at Periaps, and that mountain there is where I am aiming for. So this should be nice and simple. What we're gonna do is configure ourselves for a landing. Uh, you'll notice that I've already got rid of that, that little extra um, extra uh, fuel tank and, and engine I had underneath. Uh, we are now set for landing. Um, and now I've just gotta wait. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll get there soon enough. But as this is, is it, is it padlock? As this is Padlock's first mission, who knows what's going to happen? He is not a proven astronaut, though he has done well in all the simulations. So there we go, the key thing is blipping, but this is not where I want to land. Um, I, I literally want to be on the crest of the hill. Um, unfortunately, I think I may have slightly overshot the crest of the hill whilst I was doing this, but there we go, that, that, that's the way things go. Uh, so we're now nulling all our forward velocity as much as possible horizontal velocity uh, it's technically backwards as we're facing the other way so there we go so checking all my instrumentation panels i noticed that i'm going ever so slightly upwards now and that's not where i want to be going i want to be going across <coughs> excuse me and this this is about where i want to be so we're just going to null everything now um now obviously we are on Minmus, so it's a, it's a little bit of throttle here, a little bit of throttle there, uh, and it's going to take the best part of forever. So we'll just kind of time warp our way through and just give ourselves a push in the right place at the right time. Um, looking for the radar altitude there, but I couldn't find it, and I was plummeting, so I was like, you know what, we're just going to do this from the outside. Uh, a, a totally inside instrument landing should technically be better, because the radar altimeter tells you how high you are from the floor, as opposed to the one at the top of my screen right now, which tells us how high we are from the, what I presume to be mean sea level. Um, but there we go. Who knew that the ocean could be so angry? Uh, <laughs> Right, so we're coming down. We are literally at the last couple of hundred meters. Um, I can only tell this because there's my lights. Um, and yeah, everything is looking smooth. We're going to take take our time getting down because we don't want to break anything. This is kind of our main platform. Well, it's not our main platform. It's our test platform. But until our real platform gets up here after we've got some more science, this is our main platform. So there we go. Beautiful landing. Padlock has like fulfilled his mission spec uh he gets to lord it over everyone else and yeah everyone gets to be happy Ooh. so we throw down a uh, a flag because that's what you do out here um and whilst he's writing that I, I say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure guys i will see you next time where we're going to send a little sort of space car buggy type thing up specifically for going around and picking up all the science but yeah thank you very much for joining me i will see you next time bye bye <laughs>